dream about ever since you're a little kid. Hoisting that trophy over my head in Miami is definitely the end goal for this year. This is what we race all season long for. Two strong chase contenders have crashed. Elliott Sadler will win at Kentucky and advance to the round of eight. Welcome to the rare Sunday morning NASCAR Xfinity Series chase race. That's right, it's race number two of the chase for the NASCAR Xfinity Series from Dover International Speedway, the Monster Mile. A race that was supposed to be run on Saturday afternoon, but because of rain in the area, it has been pushed to this morning. And there have been some changes that have taken place. Yesterday, the teams had the engines fired, rolled out onto the track, and then the precipitation picked up. Not even the officials could believe that they had gone that long and waited to try to get it going. But there were some cup drivers that were going to be running in the Xfinity Series race. They have decided not to take place or take part in this race this morning. Austin Dillon, Kyle Busch, Joey Logano all have substitute drivers that will be racing their cars this morning. Regan Smith, Drew Herring, and Ryan Blaney all filling in for the three cup chase drivers that will be turning their focus to the 400 lap race that will take place this afternoon. Starting grid rolling across the top of the screen. Again, there will be changes because of driver changes as well as big for the three team of Ty Dillon. They made unapproved adjustments in the three car. That car will have to go to the rear to start this race as well as the 15 driven by Josh Wise. Unapproved adjustments sends the 15 to the back as well. Take a look at the chase grid. Again, after one race in the chase for the Xfinity Series, Elliott Sadler, the win at Kentucky, has him advancing into the round of eight. After that, everyone fighting for the final seven positions to make it into that second round of the playoffs for the Xfinity Series. In the first year for the Xfinity Series playoff system, this chase elimination format. Joining me up in the booth today, Hall of Famer Dale Jarrett, Jeff Burton. Guys, a different just a different feel about this race this morning as opposed to everyone that was geared up to run yesterday afternoon and now all of a sudden they have to focus on a morning race and it feels like there's even more pressure on these drivers. Yeah, I think the anticipation of everything and this being the first year of this chase format in this series probably has a number of guys on edge right now and starting at 10 a.m. in the morning, you know, I've always said, if, when you think you've seen everything in this sport, just hang out a little bit longer and we'll see something a little bit different. But uh, it's made a lot of changes happen here. They have to also be looking at this as an opportunity because you've taken some of the Cub drivers out of the series and the, and the ones that did come back in, such as Blaney, you know, he's going to have to start in the back of the pack. So, uh, you know, there's an advantage to go take advantage of the, the opportunity to go take advantage of Cub drivers not being in this in the second race of this playoff system. So these teams have to be looking at a, being able to take an advantage of this opportunity. So again, a driver change for the 18, but that's not all that has been taking place this morning with the 18 team. Isn't that right, Mike? Uh, that's correct. Drew Herring is the new driver replacing Kyle Busch, but the big issue for the 18 team transpired when NASCAR inspected the car on pit road this morning. They saw something they did not like with the rear window. They asked them to make an adjustment, and as they tried to make the adjustment, they were using a hammer to, to pop it out they cracked the windshield. So they had to roll the car all the way back to the garage area and replace that windshield. Silicone being put on there right now. They just rolled it out onto the grid moments ago, but it was a pretty close call for the 18 team making that adjustment. And uh, they were able to do it, but they'll start at the back. So again, Drew Herring from Benson, North Carolina, the 29 year old subbing for Kyle Busch will be focusing on the elimination race for the Cup Series chase. But Drew Herring has been a part of the Joe Gibbs Racing family for uh, some time now. He used to work in the machine shop, uh, but has done a lot of test driving practice. He's filled in for drivers when this situation has come up. Not normally for races, but he has done that in the past as well. No, he's a good little race car driver. He does a lot of testing for Joe Gibbs racing with, with the Toyota simulator, spends a lot of time in the simulator, so he has a tremendous amount of seat time in the simulator, but also when he gets an opportunity, he does a really good job in these race cars. He really does an outstanding job, but kind of a reversal of what he's been accustomed to. He's the one usually setting the car up for another driver to come in. Now, he was called here uh, last night uh, to, to come here and be a part of this, and gosh, yeah. 
who wouldn't take that call and say, yeah, yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> if I have to drive up all night, I'll be there. That's a great phone call, isn't it? <laughs> That's the one you're waiting for. Let's listen into the 62 team communications. This is what they had to say, getting ready for this race. Talking to you on a Sunday. Did something happen to my career? Oh, no way, never mind. Yeah, the 18th coming back up there. He's uh, excited to get his new deal. All three of them. It's a bonus for us. It's a tough place, man, especially single groove is going to be take advantage today. Yeah, 10-4 on that. Actually, yesterday it came in a little quicker than it did on Friday, but uh, I'll keep you informed what's going on there. And we're going to keep our eye on the 18. We saw Drew Herring bring the 18 down onto pit road again. They were really scrambling to get the air pressure set and everything because they literally just a minute before they were firing the engines, they were still in the garage area. And the crews came and grabbed something. So uh, that will send the 18 back out onto the track. And of course, it will have to start. The 18 will start in the back of the field because of a driver change. It was supposed to be Kyle Busch. It will now be Drew Herring. So they'll start in the back of this field and the adjustments that they had to make when they put the new rear window in the back of that car as well. With more on the three, let's go to Dave Burns. Well, Rick, there's something going on right now, and the normally very accommodating Nick Harrison crew chief has not been able to speak to me yet about it. He's been in contact with NASCAR. He's been on his phone texting back and forth with NASCAR uh, officials up in the booth to try to argue his point. I don't know what the point is, but they were told that they'd have to go to the rear of the field for unapproved adjustments. Now, you know, as for right now, the three car is still in his seventh starting position, hasn't gone back yet, and I haven't been able to talk to Nick yet because he's still arguing his point. So we'll find out a little bit about that. Again, they were told unapproved adjustments, uh, and so they were sent to the, or being told that they were sent to the back of the field. But obviously right now, there's a little bit of question as to what that is uh, that they are being sent to the back for. Now, a week ago, it was a tough battle between the three and the 20 of Eric Jones. These two cars got into this little mess when they were fighting for third, and so that has put them in a hole as far as advancing into the round of eight. Eric Jones, Ty Dillon. Eric Jones, three points behind the cutoff line, and Ty Dillon, 15 points behind that cutoff line. And if Ty Dillon does indeed have to go to the back, uh, this only makes their, their struggles that much tougher. You heard Brendan Gaughan when he was talking on the radio how he thinks it's going to be a single groove racetrack for a little while, and that's going to make it very difficult to pass. So going to the back is it could be a huge penalty, take a long time to develop a second groove for Ty to be able to start picking up those spots. Yeah, it looks like he's headed back there. I was wondering, they said he was going to text NASCAR. I never want any arguments talking to them, so maybe texting's a better idea and you get things done. I don't know. <laughs> We're going to ride along with a few different drivers today, one of those being Darrell Wallace Jr., the number six. He has the Ford onboard camera. He will start in the ninth position. Ty Dillon, we've just talked about with the Sonic in-car camera, will have to go to the rear or maybe have to go to the rear after their case is discussed with NASCAR. Justin Allgaier in the seven has the Chevy onboard camera and will start in the third row. And Eric Jones starting on pole with the advanced auto parts on board camera. You can watch the chase for the NASCAR Xfinity Series with the NBC Sports app. And you can get closer to additional camera angles, driver stats, track information. You can watch live anywhere on any device. To find out more at NBCSports.com slash live. Want to listen in to Justin Allgaier and the team communications here just moments ago. Go out there and give it everything we got today. Sorry, I screwed up qualifying a little bit, but still got a good qualifying spot here. I think we got a good enough car to go win this race. So let's go have some fun, and uh, I'll give you everything I got in here. Again, an opportunity for the Xfinity Series regulars when you take three very good drivers and take them out of the seat, uh, cup regulars, and you have people that are looking to gain points, especially like a Ty Dillon uh, and an Eric Jones, guys that are in need of gaining points so that they can advance into the next round. I think the key, though, is recognizing the situation that you're in. And we saw last week everybody got exceptionally aggressive, had a lot of cautions, a lot of wrecks, a lot of people ducked themselves whole. So 
in the points. You just cannot afford another bad race. So you, you got Ty Dillon going to the back. He's going to have to control his emotions, understand that it's a long day. You're not going to make it up in one segment. It's going to be a grind. Take your time. Don't push too hard. Yeah, I think that's the problem. I think Ty Dillon's under the most pressure right now because of what happened last week. And he, you know, when he was rolling off yesterday, he was in his regular starting position, everything good. Now an early morning and headed to the back here. Yeah, he actually rolled off yesterday, yeah. and so uh, they did not get the green flag yesterday. That's why it was postponed. The green flag coming 19 hours after it was scheduled to fly, and there we see the two of Regan Smith, one of the three substitute drivers for chase drivers. Regan Smith has a win a year ago at this very racetrack. Field all in line now behind Eric Jones and Alex Bowman making up row number one. As they come out of turn number four, the second race of the Chase for the Xfinity Series is underway from Dover. See Alex Bowman in that outside lane. It'll be difficult to get that outside leg working to start with. It's going to take a little bit of time to get it rubbered up. Three wide behind them. It looks like both Bowman and Elliott Sadler made the outside move work uh, just a little bit to get a spot and get themselves back down to the bottom. And already you're starting to see a few black lines. And right there, the 15. Josh Wise. Had unapproved adjustments and flames rolling out from behind that car. Engine failure or oil line off. You can see the you can see the fire underneath the car it would indicate there was some sort of oil that was burning on the exhaust pipes. Fire about that one, guys. He's at the back side of the garage. Take another look. Early on, this is just lap two. And it explodes. Well, and drivers behind did a great job. Boy, not, not a worse feeling to drive off into the corner, Jeff, and not be able to see anything and wonder what's on the bottom, what's on oh, yeah. the track. Yeah. See there the was a little bit of contact yeah. there. 77 of Matt Waltz went up the track. Also, yeah, not to mention the speeds on these corner entries. You're just absolutely moving on this straightaway. It's so fast. Driving into turn one, a lot of throttle. So. When something happens here on corner entry, it is a, uh, if you don't hit something, you've done a great job. Takes your breath away. So we saw Matt Waltz in the 77 slide up the track, hit Matt, but Matt DiBenedetto in the 10. Keep our eye on those two and make sure that uh, isn't more damage there. Mike. Well, Rick, as we all know, there is a big race coming up just after this one, the Sprint Cup Series elimination race. And there are a number of drivers on the bubble that are paying very close attention to this race, including Jamie McMurray. He's below the cutoff line. So I found it rather curious that he was on Brennan Poole's pit box this morning. I went up and I asked him, what are you trying to learn from watching this race? It was a very serious racing question. He just laughed and pointed in front of him to his young son, Carter. He said, I'm not here to learn anything. I'm here to play father. We've been in the motor coach for three days. This is the first opportunity I've, I've been able to have with my young son, Carter, to actually watch a race from the top of the pit box. And they're enjoying that today before Jamie has to put on his fire suit and go racing this afternoon. Great After three days in the motor home with a young man like that, it's, it's time <laughs> to get out. That's right. It, is, it needs to stretch his legs a little bit. Yeah, Carter needed out, but so did Jamie. So that's that's, right. yeah, it works well for everybody. A little crew chief help right there. That's right. And there's a few things you need to learn when you're up on top of the pit box. Yeah, he's, I'm not thumbs up yet. Yeah. I hadn't even made a call. So. <laughs> we'll deal with that when it happens. Again, an early caution coming out for Josh Wise and that engine expiring.
NASCAR on CNBC is brought to you by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Xfinity, change the way you experience TV with Xfinity X1. And by Ford, we go further so you can. Get the latest NASCAR news results and highlights delivered straight to your inbox. Never miss a story or last lap pass by subscribing to the official NASCAR newsletter today. Visit NASCAR.com slash newsletter. Welcome back to the Drive Sober 200. Under the first caution, pit road was open. Nobody came. They had only run two laps. And again, a competition caution at lap 40 would mean that they can't add fuel. They could make adjustments, but through two laps, you're probably not going to know too much about how much adjustments you're going to need to make to your car. Now, you're kind of hanging on at that point to, to get started and then catch your breath and figure out what may be happening. Dave. Rick, while they're cleaning up on the track, we get to ask Nick Harrison, the crew chief for Ty Dillon, what exactly was going on and why NASCAR sent you to the reader's start? Um, we had put silicone down the deck fan, the shark fan on the deck lid, and uh, it was done yesterday prior to tech. I think there was a question that we might have did it this morning. It was called unapproved adjustment, but I, I kind of talked to Wayne, and I always respect Wayne, and, and I know his judgment's always right. And I, It was just one of those deals where I was unaware that that was a, a part of the a, a rules infraction. You know, there's, there's a question that there's literature on it, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, now I know we've, we've got to suffer from the call I made to have the, the silicone on it, but uh, Ty's focus is right. He's, uh, his, his head's in the game. We're 25th already, two laps into the deal, so our focus on getting to victory lane with the red cap Chevy four days in. All right, thank you, Nick. Right. Guys, it's just like we, we would caulk a sink or something, just a beat of it running down that shark fin, that aerodynamic piece on the, uh, the deck lid. Yeah, NASCAR just works really hard to make sure everybody's cars are the same. And any bolt-on pieces that shark fin's made, it's a safety device. Uh, they want to make sure people aren't using it for an aerodynamic advantage over what someone else has. So I guess they viewed that silicone as not being able to let air run underneath it and uh, provide a little bit of a small advantage. But I, what I find interesting, DJ, is that there were two penalties this morning after starting the race yesterday. Yeah, like yeah. it was almost like they went back through tech or NASCAR officials. They went through tech before the race, but then right. NASCAR officials went and looked again, and they found two things that they didn't like after being on the racetrack yesterday. That's very unusual. So it shows you, as this chase has started, NASCAR is looking exceptionally hard to make sure these teams are playing within the rules. Yeah, and that's on the, the left uh, side there on the deck lid. And so as you pointed out, any air you can keep to make sure that it's helping to do anything that it can as far as down force, side force. They're just looking for a little bit. and I. You wouldn't think there would be a rule against something as simple as silicone on there, but uh, certainly it, it looks like that there is for, for NASCAR and, and uh, in their opinion. But as Jeff pointed out, I think it, whether, you know, maybe yesterday it slipped by, there was a lot of things happening with, with the weather and everything, and they can't look at everything, but when they get a little, little bit yeah. more time, you better be careful. So the first caution has come out for Josh Wise, and right behind Josh Wise, when he had the engine expire, uh, the 10 of Matt De Benedetto was up there, as well as the 77 of Matt Waltz. And you see how Waltz got up into the 10 of Matt De Benedetto, and then uh, Matt obviously uh, wasn't expecting that. And uh, yeah, Josh and Matt discussing what took place there. A lot of damage there. Pretty pretty hard hit to start with. So an unfortunate day for both drivers standing outside of their cars already, Josh Wise and Matt DiBenedetto. You can imagine the disappointment. You got in your race car yesterday, you got going, then it rained, and you waited all night long. You get in the car and a wreck on lap two, you're involved in a wreck. So exceptionally disappointed. Let's listen in to the 11 team communications. All good. We'll regroup here. I think outside was looking good. You was the driver, wasn't you, Jay? I, when I saw him getting a run down in the three, I knew he was getting ready driving in there way too hard for the first lap here. I love what you said. I mean, he's coming at you. I mean, when he came in eye view, he had him jacked up. That was spotter coverage presented by Liberty Mutual Insurance, helping drivers worry less and a difficult place to spot from. Uh, it is, yeah. And that was my son, Jason, uh, who spots <laughs> for Blake Cook and will uh, later on today uh, go with uh, Ryan Newman. But uh, I was talking to him earlier, and he was talking about what a good car they had. Didn't get the qualifying lap, but he thought Blake was going to do very well today. But sounded like he might have to calm his driver down just a little bit there to start with. Well, again, that's judging the speed of that second groove right now. You know, you really yeah. don't know how much grip yeah. it has. And 
it's done nothing but rain since these cars got off the racetrack. So as this track rubbers up a little bit, you'll probably be able to be a little more aggressive on corner entry into one and into two. We've touched a little bit on the fact that there are double duty, not only drivers doing double duty, but pit crews doing double yeah. duty. Well, spotters also doing double duty. There are a lot of cup spotters that also spot for the Xfinity Series, so they're putting in 600 laps today. Yeah, I went and saw some of the spotters this morning, and they, they told me that about 90% of the spotters that are spotting today will spot later today for the cup race. So these guys have a full day. It's not physically difficult, they told me, but mentally and emotionally, it's a little bit strained, and they're going to have to stay focused for 600 miles rather than what they anticipated 400. Eric Jones and Daniel Suarez making up the front row now. As they come into the restart zone. Green flag back in the air. Great restart for Daniel Suarez in the 19 on the outside line. And that Darrell Wallace all but pushing him down the front straightaway now, pushing down the back. Speedy drives what they went through there. They put down on the track to try to absorb some of the fluid that came out of the car that exploded just a moment ago. Well, DJ Darrell Wallace right now, he knows he has to fight hard on the outside. If he doesn't get by this 88, he feels like there's a line coming. If he, if he cannot clear him, he could lose four or five spots here. Yeah, and he's not getting any help there whatsoever. And he was excited about this opportunity. He said he probably likes to race here more than anywhere else. Thought that they could get a great finish opportunity to win. Take a look at Ty Dillon on the left of your screen. Had to start in the back because of unapproved adjustments, and he is marching through this field. Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch Ty Dillon come up through the field. We know how aggressive he is. He's going to be pushing every button, doing everything he can to get to the front. An already naturally aggressive driver being put to the back is going to make him that much more aggressive. Do you consider this a quick race, only 200 laps? I, think so. I consider it a very quick way race. You cannot afford many mistakes. Being put on the back is a bigger penalty here than it is, say, next week at Charlotte, where it's a 300-mile race. Yeah, and he's able, he's got a good race car. He's able to go to the outside, the inside. Uh, I, I'm sure that he was not happy uh, about the situation of having to go to the back. Makes for a more stressful day, but doing a nice job working his way through now. Historically, Ty Dillon has actually ended up doing well when starting at the rear. When he starts in the back, 12th is the worst that he has finished after starting in the back. This is the sixth time that Ty Dillon has had to start in the back of the field and we see him continuing to march forward already up to 19. Yeah, he's approaching. You see Corey LeJoy right there in the 24 car getting a shot this weekend. A lot of success at the k and level. But right in front of Ty Dillon, that 11 car of Blake Cook, here's a guy that's in the chase. When you look in the mirror, you know you're, one of your competitors had to start in the back, and here he is all the way on your back bumper already on lap 15. That's telling you, hey, we got to get going. We got to find a way to make our race car better because we're going to give up a lot of points if we don't. A little bobble there by Ty Dillon, the center of the turn. But again, he's got his sights set on the 11 of Blake Cook right now. 12 chase drivers all fighting for eight spots. Elliott Sadler with a win at Kentucky a week ago has locked himself into the round of eight. Dale, this is what's so hard about Dover. He's caught, he's caught the 11 car. Now what do you yeah. do with him? There yeah. is no second groove just yet. It hasn't worked up. So how do you pass him? you got to find a way to carry more speed on corner exit. You see right there he makes an aggressive move to get underneath and get in the corner. But that's with, when this track's a one groove track, that's why it's so hard to pass. Yeah, and, and you're exactly right. He could utilize that outside against some cars that were quite a bit slower. But now he's catching cars that, that have good speed here. So as Jeff pointed out, it's going to be much more difficult. But he's doing a nice job. He, he was patient there, waited until he got the run that he needed, and then took the spot away. Uh, looks like his car, he feels very comfortable getting down into the corner. And that's a good move to be able to have here. Yeah, I like what he's doing. He's just kind of showing his car. He's really not yeah. in that position, but he gets about three-quarters of the way down the straightaway, turns left, and lets that guy in front of him know, hey, I'm quicker than you. I'm coming. And they haven't put up the fight. So, you know, that's Ty Dillon using his head, just saying, look, you know I'm faster than you. Give me this spot. Now, right here, he just earned this, this position on Jeremy Clemens by just turning underneath him off turn four. And already up to the 15th spot for Ty Dillon. Kelly. Go ahead, Kelly. We saw Ty Dillon get around another chase driver, the 11 of Blake Cook. Well, as the three got by, the message from his crew chief, Chris Rice, was, all right, now you've got to go with that three car. I know you're a little bit tight, but we got a lot of more cars coming. So the message for him was,
was to try to stick with that three, but he has fallen back a couple of spots, Dave. Another reason the three running so well. Brand new race car, not a new generation per se, but a car with a lot of updates on it that they hope they like well enough that they'll take the extra time to turn it around immediately and run it at Charlotte. So far, it's looking like that might be what they do, Marty. Dave, speaking of drivers coming up through the field, Ryan Blaney has gained 16 positions after starting 37th today. Originally, Joey Logano was supposed to be in this car, but Todd Gordon, his Sprint Cup Series crew chief, told me about Thursday he saw the rain coming. He started politicking in that time. Listen, if this race rains out, I really think that we should put Blaney in the car. That's the move they made, and they made it very quickly when it rained out yesterday afternoon, but he didn't want to give up the seat, Dave, because he said this is the best car we've had in the 22 bunch all year long. Same story kind of for Austin Dillon, Marty, in that two car now to the outside. That two car is being driven by Regan Smith. Regan was contacted yesterday afternoon about 5 p.m. by the Richard Childress group. Said, would you like to drive our car tomorrow? Because our chaser, Austin Dillon, needs to sit out and be ready for this afternoon's event. That's what they're doing. Smith said on the first run, I'm just sort of feeling it out right now. No laps, of course, for Regan in the two car. Thanks, Dave. A couple guys feeling it out and probably not the feeling they were hoping for. Take a look at the wiggle here out of the 51 of Jeremy Clements. That's pretty loose. That's uh, as we talked about, you know, a car underneath you or up there in the position where there's not much road. Look at the two car getting into turn one. That's no fun, is it, DJ? No. Loose into Dover? No, not at all. And, but you've pointed out there's nothing up there, no grip there right now. So they need some more running up there to get uh, for them to have a good feel as they try to make that uh, second lane work a little bit. And Suarez in the 19 making the low line work as he tries to stay on the back bumper of Eric Jones. Eric Jones, the winningest Xfinity Series driver in 2016, but found himself in a bit of a hole after last week racing Ty Dillon very hard for third. Those two got together. And then Eric Jones slid all the way back to ninth in the point standings because of a poor finish. Now trying to rectify that situation. Hoping to get another win on the season and lock himself into the round of eight. Yeah, you know. Jeff pointed out the opportunity that today presented by these cup drivers getting out and probably in particular Eric Jones looking at his teammate Kyle Busch even though he proved back here in the spring didn't matter who was here he could outrun everybody but he had to certainly look at this and say this is my chance to, to make up for last week's mistake. Yeah. Eric Jones doing all he has to do right now he's running up front leading laps at Dover.
Welcome back to the Monster Mile. Later today, the Sprint Cup Series countdown to green on NBCSN at 1.30. Then racing on the Monster Mile for the Sprint Cup Series. It is an elimination race. NASCAR America post race show at 5.30. Victory lap at 6. And racing routes with Kevin Harvick, Kyle Petty, and Rutledge Wood. That will be this evening. Great show. As we are riding along with Darrell Wallace Jr. currently running 6. The caution has come out. Backstretch, the 97 of Jordan Anderson. Right front right there, I guess. Quite a bit of movement there and yeah. front into that car. You heard him say he blew a right front. I think the right front is damaged so badly that it's gone over and it's damaged the suspension on the left front as well. And it's one of the things with limited practice that we had this weekend, especially at a racetrack like Dover DJ, where you really don't get a chance to evaluate what kind of camber you have in the car. It's very easy to exceed the amount of camber and damage that right front tire. One of the concerns going into a green racetrack with low lap times in practice, it's very easy to have a right front tire failure. Yeah, and this place is hard on equipment anyway. We talked about how you slam down into the corners and uh, just everything that takes place. And I'd seen this 97 just wiggle up in the middle of three and four the previous lap. So uh, he obviously had an issue, and you could see as he came off turn two that tire leg up. Fairly close to lap 40, uh, which was supposed to be the competition caution in there. Oh. We see Ty Dillon smacking the wall. That safer barrier has been added. 150 feet has been added of safer barrier in the exit of turn two and the exit of turn four. Wow, that was another no coffee, that keep digging. Yeah, close situation call. for Justin no, Algar. But that was big contact with the three right. car right there. He's worked himself up to ninth position. And that was, uh, yeah. DJ, I'm not so sure that's not damage. Like damage that they're going to have to take time to fix. And I'm hearing from NASCAR that this will be the competition caution because it was so close to lap 40. So. The teams will be able to come onto pit road, add fuel, do all the changes that they would normally be able to do on pit road. There's a lot of damage there. Yeah. What a great job he had done driving his way inside the top 10 in a short amount of time, 32 laps that it took him to get into the top 10. You can see the difference. How quickly things can happen here, Jeff. You think that you're just going driving up off the corner, but as Rick pointed out, that extra safer barrier that was added there certainly came into play right there. Yeah, no question, because he got into the safer barrier, but then he, when he went past the safer barrier, it, he got into the wall without the safer barrier, almost like he was leaning on the wall, then it wasn't there anymore. And, but with the wall not being there, it made him smack the outside wall without the safer barrier even harder. So you're right, DJ, that had an impact. Pit road is open, and here they come. And Alex Bowman, your upper left corner in the 88 car coming down pit road. He's been saying that the car's been free in and snaps loose off. They're going to try to tighten him up with an air pressure adjustment, also a wedge adjustment there as well. Justin Allgaier, meanwhile, experiencing a very tight race car, saying the right front tire feels like it has 3,000 pounds of air in it. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment there and also a wedge adjustment on the 7 car, Marty. Daniel Suarez tried to get the lead from his teammate Eric Jones. You see just two right side tires for the 19. He said it was loose on entry tight on exit for Eric Jones. He said his car way too free, fighting it like crazy was his quote off the corner. Loose for Eric Jones. Track bar adjustments for both of those race cars. So the caution comes out and involved in the issue, at least with the wall, was the three of Ty Dillon. The chaser trying to make his way into the top eight.
This program is brought to you by Craftsman. Celebrate 25 years of Craftsman Club by texting SPEED to 95990 for a chance to win a 2017 Chevy Silverado 1500. And welcome back to the Dover International Speedway as this is the second race of the chase for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. And already our second caution has come out. Let's go back into Pit Road and on to Pit Road with Dave Burns. Hey, guys. Uh, on track now for Ty Dillon after repairs on Pit Road. The discussion was about the whole side of the car because if he get hit the front hard enough to change the alignment, that's a concern, but he doesn't believe that's a big deal. More toward the rear of the car, and they just basically pulled out the fender there. You can see the scrapes all the way down the side, but they think it's going to be okay having just worked on the right rear. And we see this impact. You see Ty gets loose coming off the corner, makes contact with the safety barrier, then boom, hits the outside wall. It's almost like that safety, safer barrier in a strange kind of way. It shot him back out of the racetrack, and then he went back and got into the wall. And typically, we'll see a, you know, we'll see a little, you know, right here is what it'll look like. There'll be a piece of steel that connects the, the wall to the safer barrier. At this racetrack, we don't see that. I don't know if that had an impact or not, but certainly different than what we normally see. Yeah, you know, and in the spring, that wasn't there, and right. he would have just slid. He, that, that car would have never touched the wall whatsoever, I don't believe, in, in that point. But we need the safer barrier there. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. That's a great – see, last year the, the safer barrier blended into the wall. It, it but came way back. Off, yeah, it came yeah. off the safer barrier, and it blended into the concrete wall. Here it's just a blunt end. And I don't know the impact of that, but it's certainly different than what we normally see. So don't want to criticize the track for putting the safer barriers in because no. we need it, but maybe we need to reevaluate the end of that wall. Both drivers held their position. Eric Jones has chosen the outside line for this restart. Green flag back in the air. 18 car got a bad restart on the bottom. Here he's trying to stack the field up. Suarez with a little advantage coming off the turn, but now here comes Eric Jones in the 20 on the outside. Alex Bowman in the 88 running third in that higher line. NASCAR taking another look at that restart, making sure everything was done correctly. Well, Jones has kept the lead from the outside and inside. It'll be interesting to see if we have another restart, which he may choose, because it looks like he's had to work really hard to keep the lead from Daniel Suarez in both inches. And NASCAR has said restart is good. And I believe the two leaders, they did two tires. Most of the rest of the field did four, but the guys up front did two. We have to see as this run goes on, if we get a long run at that cost. What's most difficult, right fronts at this racetrack? Well, the problem Lean is... Lean on that the most? Well, you know, being loose here is difficult. You don't want the car to be loose, but you tend to... If you don't want to be loose, you tend to be too tight. And when you're too tight, that really is hard on the right front tire. We saw right here Drew Herring in the 18 car on the inside line coming to get the green flag. This does not get going. I thought initially maybe he missed a shift, but it looks like to me he just never gave going right I don't know if he did. Yeah. Hey, Dave can confirm he did miss a shift. They called it out on the radio right after that start. Yeah, Dave, I wondered if he even had it in the wrong gear maybe, uh, you know, just trying to get himself acclimated inside there. But it's recovered nicely. It happened so early, it's hard to understand how he missed a shift. But unless he realized he was maybe in the wrong gear and going to a different gear. Remember, he doesn't drive the car very exactly. often. So, you know, he could have been surprised by something, expecting to have a different ratio than he had. And, had it in second gear when he should have been in third gear or maybe in first gear, so you just don't know all those situations. Drew Herring, after having started the back because of driver change, it was supposed to be uh, Kyle Busch behind the wheel of the 18 for the Xfinity Series race, but because it was rained out yesterday and too close to the cup race, which will be run this afternoon, they chose to take 
the driver Kyle Busch out of the 18 put Drew Herring in there and he's done a great job he's already worked his way up into the top 10. Yeah really good job on a very very difficult racetrack. Yeah just jumping in there uh, last minute to, to do all of that back to the two tire uh, conversation just one second the one thing that I would think about a green racetrack you obviously get more tire wear I would have been a little more concerned in doing that even though we didn't have a lot of green flag laps in that first run that would have been my only concern is wearing the left front possibly uh, on a green racetrack. And we're also hearing that the 18 car he is also on two tires so the two leaders are on two tires the 18 car is also on two tires we'll get a few updates from what took place on pit road we go to marty snyder and guys i talked to chris gave hard about that he said his mark really for going for four tires today was going to be about 50 laps so when the cop caution came right before lap 40 at lap 36 he wouldn't went with the two tire stop for eric jones talked to eric this week and he really had a tough time forgiving himself for what happened at kentucky last week and he told me we have to race differently in these next two races in round one of the chase here in the xfinity series we've got to be conservative and just get points and i hate points racing but you know what when you're in the lead like this you got to go for the win mike and marty speaking of kentucky justin allgaier did exactly what he needed to do there to win a championship, and that's minimize a bad day. A torn up race car, but somehow he was able to turn in a top 10 performance and get away with a ninth place finish in Kentucky. That gives him a bit of a foundation going into this race. Consequently, he says, they just need to do their job in these next two races, finish among the top 10, and they will advance, but they've got their work cut out for them. They feel like they've got a pretty tight race car right now. Needs to be freed up before the end of this thing, Kelly. Mike Bubba Wallace came into this race fifth in the chase standings with a seven point but for the message from his crew chief before the green flag flew was you know what we need to do here just have a solid day take care of it be there at the end to which Bubba echoed yes nothing spectacular here they had considered a two tire stop but Bubba had a tight race car to start off and they thought if they took two tires during that competition caution that they would ultimately start quote sinking like a rock Bubba with four fresh tires now saying that the car is a little bit better Dave. His teammate Ryan Reed started the day seven points to the good in terms of the chase. There he is in the 16 car, and he had the right attitude for an unpredictable day here. He told me yesterday that they were gonna that they worked so hard last week at New Hampshire, made adjustments all day long. He just stayed calm. And coming into today, we don't know how the track is gonna rubber up. That is exactly the attitude he needs. Just a little bit of a tight race car right now for Ryan. And Ryan Reed already has had his hands full uh, early in the second run. Trying to make a pass on Ryan Priest. He's give and take right there. Yeah. No, he wanted to stab the throttle and go in that <laughs> hole, but he was yeah. too sideways to do it, Dale. <laughs> Makes it tough around here.
NASCAR on CNBC is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance, helping drivers worry less on the track and on the road. Spotters up top, hard into the wall, the 25. Ryan Ellis coming out of turn number four, a lot of damage to both the right side and left side now. I think he had a tire must have been going down there, Joe. Started going up on him through the corner there, through three or four there. They get back. See, see the mm. front of the car fall down and very hard impact. And right there's the reason that safer barrier is against the inside wall here that goes to pit road two to help these drivers in these situations. Ryan Ellis considering this a home race for him as he's from Ashburn, Virginia. He was running 31st and hard into the wall has brought the caution out for the third time. Daniel Suarez was able to get by the 20 of Eric Jones and take the lead away. And we were at commercial break. This is what took place. It looked like Jones just finally gave up the fight. He was really having to work hard to keep Suarez back there. So now, Jeff, this is always a difficult decision as a driver. You put two tires on, so it affected your car, but now we're going to probably come in and get four tires. What adjustments do we make? That's right. You're telling your driver, tell your crew chief what the car is doing, but he doesn't really know what four tires is going to do either. So the other difficult decision is for everybody behind them. You saw those two cars maintain the lead by doing two tires. Do you do two tires? But you've also seen two cars blow tires. Yeah. So. Are you concerned about that? Are you afraid with the point battle that we have? Are you afraid to come in and do two tires? Or do you want to do four tires to play it safe and make sure you don't have a right front tire failure? Once again, the 16 of Ryan Reed. Issues as well. Look at him coming off the turn. And he will also kiss the wall, just like we saw with Ty Dillon earlier. Once again, just that added safer barrier right there. I mean, that was always a narrow part. And as a driver, you drive to whatever confines you have, you know. But when you're used to something and having room at a place to where you're powering up and you're carrying a lot of speed, you need that extra couple of feet, uh, especially here at Dover. Yeah, and if that wall wasn't there, they'd be scrubbing the, the, the other wall. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. It just lets you be in the throttle that much harder pushing the speed. So you're going to push that limit. Taking everything they can. You were just talking about what will the 19 do. Let's listen in to their strategy. Copy that. Three numbers. I think it's too early here. It's only 19 laps. We've already gone through one set of tires. There's only two left. I'm with you. So they're talking about staying out, perhaps. You just, you know, you only hear a limited set of tires in the Xfinity Series. You can't just throw tires on it all day long. So with only a short run, maybe just stay out. So the question is the people behind them, you know, running learning in 10th position, 15th, what do those guys do? Do they see this as an opportunity? The leaders don't pit. Do you see a guy like Ryan Reed, Blake Cook, Brendan Poole, who are not having good days that are in the chase, need something good to happen? Can they do the opposite of what the leaders did? So again, strategy coming into play on this most recent caution. Now, NASCAR Drive is NASCAR.com's live race day companion. You can select your in-car video or camera angle access integrated driver stats lap by lap commentary social conversation all in real time you won't miss a lap when you visit nascar.com slash drive on your personal computer right now track or track cleanup continuing you get a big hit for ryan ellis and pit road's not open yet because he is sitting down on the apron which would be the exit uh, of the pits for these drivers if anyone decides I'm sure somebody's going to come right and so these teams have a lot of time right now yeah. more than normal as far as to make decisions and probably sometimes you can overthink it yeah and that's you know, in this series there's a limit to the number of tires you have to work with uh, and it's a, a low number uh, but would that could that impact them and thinking about those cars uh, that only got two tires then uh, apparently the left side tires aren't any concern to them in getting into a long run here. Ty Dillon just seven points back from the cut line as he had to start at the back of the field but has made his way up currently running in the ninth position Daniel Suarez shown second now on the chase grid because he's the race leader and as they continue on. Uh, if he were to win the race, then he would advance into the round of eight with that win. Win, and you advance. Yeah, we saw some cars. We saw uh, 
Brendan Poole, who now would be out of that top, you know, top group. He's all the way back in 20th, so they've got to find some performance. But on the other side of that, although he's still not in that top eight, Brandon Jones, who had a bad luck last week, got into a wreck, not of his doing. He's having a good solid day in eighth position. So what will these guys do? Will they right. use this caution as an opportunity to try to gain an opportunity to put tires on when other people don't? Yeah, I think they look at this a little bit differently in this series whenever you fall behind. And even though it's still that three race uh, elimination factor, you're you're talking about trying to outpoint guys that you have outpointed by quite a bit throughout the year. So if you just go do your job and be solid, no mistakes for two weeks, then you can probably make your way back into that round of eight. Cleanup continuing for most recent caution. We'll look away to break. Be right back. NASCAR on CNBC is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. Craftsman. If it matters to you, it matters to us. Craftsman. When it matters. And by Credit One Bank. The official credit card of NASCAR. Under the third caution of the day. This most recent one for the 25 of Ryan Ellis slamming into the wall coming off of turn four. Pit road's open now. We're going to see going to try to gain an advantage from the back. I think the leaders are going to stay out from what we've heard. So the top two are staying on the racetrack. No, everybody's staying out. Quite a few staying out. Goes all the way back to the two. And so we see Regan Smith leading a group of cars and he was 14th. So Regan Smith back a lot of drivers taking advantage of Maybe trying to get fresher tires. Utilize that to move up through this field. Dave. 16 of Ryan Reed will take on four at this time. His car was just a little bit tight on the last run. Uh, Regan Smith is also on pit road on and off, and he's in the tire conserve mode. You guys were talking about the allotment they give them. Just a chassis adjustment for the two of Smith on this time as well, Mike. Brendan Poole on pit road. They just made some adjustment, a track bar adjustment. They also put some tape on the grill. The car's just too tight behind people. No tires or fuel, however. Again, because of the limited number of tires, you have to conserve because only 67 laps into this 200 lap race, they know how important those tires will be later in the race. Marty? 
Rick, we saw Eric Jones give up the lead to his teammate Daniel Suarez. Been fighting the handling on that 20 car. Take a listen. It's weird, you know, how it, it gets tight. It's like when the rubber first gets laid down, it gets tight in the center and exit. We can lay some more down, then it gets loose in the center, but stays pretty tight on exit. I can, I can kind of work it on exit, but I'm using the apron, you know. And Jeff, we've talked all weekend long about how much this racetrack changes. Certainly going to be the case here in the Xfinity Series race. That's what these drivers are fighting right now. Well, it is going to change. And what's amazing is how it changes, you know, even without putting tires on. So if you look at the racetrack right now, it's completely white. There's no rubber on the racetrack because the rubber gets picked up. So you go through these transitions based on when the green flag falls and when the caution falls the next time. It's not really from the first lap to the 200th lap. It's more from caution to caution because the rubber gets picked back up. So it's very unique at this racetrack how that happens. You can see how white it is. You can see where the cars have been running under caution. It's almost like no one's been on the racetrack all day. Mike Massaro. And another story we're following here this weekend is the Junior Motorsports team. And of course, team owner Dale Earnhardt Jr. back at the racetrack, Rick, observing his teams. We saw one of his teams go to victory lane in the chase opener last week with Elliot Sadler winning. Well, uh, Junior right now up on top of the 88 pit box. Kind of gave a health update earlier this week. Says he's feeling much better than he was five weeks ago. And also said that he's been spending some time in the race simulator. It's helped challenge him mentally right now and something his doctors really want him doing. Something else that would be therapeutic, of course, Rick? One of his cars going to victory lane here again today, and they've been running awfully well. Yeah, absolutely. Front row made up of Daniel Suarez and Eric Jones. Suarez has decided the outside line will work best for him. Green flag back in the air. We were mentioning the limited number of tires, only four sets for the race. Big move there by Justin Allgaier to take that second spot away. Yeah, look who's popped into fourth. Blaney, who had to start in the back of the field, he's worked himself up to fourth. Blaney in the 22. Just behind him, the 88 of Alex Bowman. So the 18 of Drew Herring, he got into the outside wall off the of turn four just a little bit. Ty Dillon looked to the bottom, trying to get by, and he will make that pass on Herring. And all the cup drivers are watching this race from their motorhomes this morning, and they've already seen three or four drivers hit that safer barrier. Has to make them a little nervous, Dale. Yeah, there's no doubt that's going to come into play. That's going to affect someone here, probably before this race is over and certainly in 400 miles here later on this afternoon. Alex Bowman, Elliott Sadler, Bowman in the 88, Sadler in the one, Elliott Sadler with a win a week ago. Can race a little more aggressive because he already knows that that win advances him into the round of eight. Darrell Wallace Jr. on the outside and Ty Dillon. In the three, trying to make the pass on the inside. That is for eight. Yeah, that contact with the wall doesn't really seem to have affected this three car and Ty Dillon that much. Uh, still really strong going around the bottom, making good speed, especially on the exit of the corner. Darrell Wallace Jr., we ride along and actually inside the car with Darrell Wallace Jr. You, almost, you could feel that drop when they come from the straightaway and drop down into the, the turns. They continue to call it landing. The car landing in the center of the turn. Oh, it's a feeling like nothing else. It's just so hard to even describe. You, you can see Darrell Wallace way up the racetrack, tried to carry a lot of speed, get into turn three, and just couldn't hold on the bottom, but trying to cross Drew Herring over coming off turn four. Kind of do it as Drew Herring will take that position. And I think that's why this racetrack suits Darrell Wallace. You know, we've seen him do very well here. He's, he's had a lot of finishes. Uh, here it's done really well, won an East race here, led 52 laps last year before having problems, is that you can attack this track. You can drive the entry very hard. There's on some race tracks you have to use a little more finesse, but DJ, there's not a really, really big penalty for overdriving the entries here, and I think that suits his driving style. Yeah, yeah you're exactly right, and that's how you make speed here. The, the more you can attack the entry to these corners, the more speed you're going to have, and Darrell Wallace does a nice job of that. And, Watching the 20 car, he's really struggling. He's now moved up to the second groove to see if he can make some speed there because it just wasn't happening on the bottom, and he might have found something here. He may have found something, but I always get nervous. Remember, he's on two tires. I don't ever want to be the first guy running that high. There's no rub on the racetrack. It's harder on tires when there is no rub on the racetrack. 
I'm always nervous to be the first one getting there at this racetrack because it is so hard on tires, but you have to go where your car wants it to go if that's where it handles the best, and that's where you put it. And Jeff, he told his crew chief, Chris Gabehart, a moment ago, he said, if I move up to that second lane, it's a little bit better. When it's on the bottom, it's evil. But Ryan Blaney, how about the run for him from the back of the field, 37th now challenging for the third position. And you can see why Joey Logano didn't want to get out of this car. They told me best car we've had all year long in this 22 stable. And this is a team who has not won all year long as he tries to get that third spot from Eric Jones. But Ryan Blaney coming up through the field very smartly with a car that's just a little bit tight on exit. They're very happy with it. The three of the cars that started in the rear are already in the top 10. The 22, the 3, and the 18. All impressive runs as Ryan Blaney continues to try to work by that 20 as we see the 19 of Suarez out front. Yeah, just watching him. You watch him. He's still right around the bottom, Jeff, which is what you want as a driver if you're able to do that. He's on two tires, and this is a driver and team that always seems to have a good car in a longer run. They might not fire off as fast as some others, but he's very good at, at conserving and, and making speed and really being good at the end of a run, and that could be beneficial here this afternoon. Yeah, I love the fact that he's on the bottom of the racetrack, just rolling the bottle, carrying a lot of speed on corner exit. Uh, and again, I, I, I just think it's a little easier on tires at this point in the race. I think as the track rubbers up, then the outside may be easier. But this point, especially with those two tires, I sure think the bottom's the way to go. Marty. And Daniel Suarez up front with the lead. He's had the car much better under the last caution. He said it's much better on the run currently. Just a little tight from center exit off. Remember, these guys had a shot to win here in June. Felt like they had the car to win the Xfinity Series race in here in June. But they got a speeding penalty on pit road. Scott Graves, the crew chief for Daniel Suarez, said, listen, we cannot have that today. It's a no-mistake day, if nothing else. They need to advance that next round, Dave. The Kentucky crash for the three-driver, Ty Dillon, was, of course, at the car of the 20 of uh, of Eric Jones and this week even though it didn't get him his finishing position back it was at least a reminder that Jones accepted responsibility a text from Eric to Ty that said yeah that was my bad right now the car about perfect according to the driver Kelly the young Brandon Jones qualified 16th running in the seventh position this is just his second race here at Dover and he has said it can be a little bit intimidating so to get some extra experience he spent time on a simulator to get extra laps he could actually adjust the weather settings so he did so to accommodate what they were expecting to see here uh, this weekend the team telling him right now that his one and two look really good telling him to work on corners three and four Mike been a bit of a challenge for Brennan Poole this weekend, Kelly. Struggled in practice, and one of the contributing factors may be the fact that Kyle Larson, who sometimes drives the 42 in the Xfinity Series as his teammate, is not behind the wheel of that race car this week. Now, Brennan Poole likes to bounce ideas off of Larson, and Larson has mentored him to a degree with his experience and advice, so much, in fact, that between practices this weekend, Brennan Poole went to the Sprint Cup Series garage to talk with Kyle Larson to get some advice. Right now, he's having to deal with a tight race car, especially in traffic as he tries to make his way toward the top 10. He's outside of it right now, Rick. Thanks, Mike. So out front, Daniel Suarez has led 30 laps. It's the first lap that he has led at this racetrack. He got into the chase with the win at Michigan, now trying to advance. We go NASCAR nonstop.
Welcome back to NASCAR Xfinity Series Racing from Dover. It's the Drive Sober 200. Let's take a look at this week's Ford Drive to the Championship. Chase Standings, Elliott Sadler with the win. Right now, Daniel Suarez leading up at the top of the list. Longire running strong, as is Darrell Wallace Jr. Ty Dillon has advanced, moved up a spot to 11th, as well as he is running right now in the number three. Marty. Rick Eric Jones has led the most laps today, but now he has fallen back to seventh. Why? Take a listen on the radio. A lot of issues with that 20 car handling wise right now. Chris Gabart, his crew chief, said, Listen, there's a plan behind all this. This will be our worst run of the day. Clearly referring to the two tires they took on the next stop. Obviously, they'll go for four on this next stop and make some major changes on that 20 car, Kelly. Brendan Gong came into this race third on the chase grid after making what he called chicken salad out of last week's race at Kentucky. They finished six in spite of him getting into the wall twice, but he said, Nobody quit. We have a no quit attitude around here. No matter who screws up, nobody quits. And it seems to be paying off for this team. Brendan Gaughan, you see right now running 12th, has said that his car is a little bit too tight. He's been searching around for better lines on this racetrack, Marty. Kelly, right now, Ryan Sieg doing a solid job in the 13th position. Mike Ford told me earlier this week that this week will tell us what we need to do for next week at Charlotte because I feel like we have to pick up a couple of spots in the chase standings if we want to have a shot at Charlotte because we feel like Dover, better racetrack for us. Right now for Ryan, dealing with a loose race car that builds looser the longer he runs. That's the handling issue they're dealing with, Kelly. Blake Cook might be the happiest guy in the chase. He said, I am 10 times more relaxed now these last two weeks than I was for the first 20 races of the season. Being in the chase is the, quote, icing on the cake for this team. It's already a success for the, to get into the chase. Now they just get to go out there and have some fun. Blake Cook says he loves this track here at Dover. It really suits his driving style, but he has been dealing with a car that's just been handling a little bit too tight, and they actually quartered the right front tire their first run out this morning. That wasn't a very long run. That was about 40 laps, actually under 40 laps. And if you've already had some cording in the right front tires, uh, you might be a little concerned about that. It's a great battle building here between Alex Bowman and the 22 of Ryan Blaney. This will take the spot. Rick, you're right. I'd be a lot concerned about that. It's what we talked about. With limited practice, you just don't get a chance to evaluate uh, your cambers and your tire wears as you would if you had a full day of practice. So going to a green racetrack that would make tire wear the much, much worse and not having a true understanding of those cambers and you can get yourself in trouble very quickly. And with that, uh, staying on the tire subject, as we're watching Elliott Sadler now, currently Sadler running in the sixth spot, but we heard the 20, and we're seeing the 20 of Eric Jones on pit road now, so an issue here. And Rick coming down pit row, what he said on the radio was, we have a vibration. It was right after we played that radio a moment ago. Chris Gabehart said, if you feel like you need to come, let's come here. We've already seen a couple of tires let go today because it's very green racetrack. So they're making the conservative call here. Remember they told me, we're points racing. That's what they said earlier this week. So they're going to come down here, take four tires for Eric Jones, see if indeed they do have a tire issue, and hope this cycles out and doesn't catch them with a caution here in a moment but Eric Jones after leading 54 laps trouble on this run coming very very early. You talk about point racing with a poor finish last week remember if it wasn't for bonus points he would be in big trouble but point racing right now this has him out of the cut line with one of the fastest cars on the racetrack all year long so trouble last week and now trouble early this this race. And you, you point at the fact that Maybe they gambled a little bit with a two-tire stop, but then you look at their teammate, Daniel yeah. Suarez, who's running up front and pulling away from the rest of the field. So you have to wonder, okay, why would it work well for Daniel Suarez but not work as well for Eric Jones? Uh, you know, you have driving styles and the cars, even though they probably start similar, uh, there are differences. And as I point out, I think Suarez and his race team set their cars up more for a longer run. So they're not being as hard on the tires in those situations with some things that they do. And the only 
thing that the 20 car can hope right now is that this cycles through for a green flag run where everybody has to make a pit stop. That's right. You only had 50 laps on those right side tires, but a poor handling car is much harder on tires than a good handling car. Everybody up front, last pitted on lap 36, already 104 laps in the books. We go NASCAR nonstop. Friday night on NBCSN, an elimination race in the Xfinity Series Chase. That's live from Charlotte. Coverage begins at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. This is the second race of the chase for the Xfinity Series. Kentucky, Dover, then Charlotte, the first round of competition. And there was a vibration on the 20 team. They came on to pit road. Marty, had they fixed it? Checked all four tires that came off of that 20 car of Eric Jones. They all look fine. They did ask him, is the vibration any better after putting four new Goodyears on? He said it's better, but not much. That's a little bit of concern because it could be a bigger issue going on with the 20 car. Could be the racetrack, but right now no panic in the 20 camp. They want this to cycle out for everyone else. His teammate up front, Daniel Suarez, the leader right now. He too now saying he has a vibration, but these leaders should be coming here in about 10 to 12 laps or so for their green flag stop. So not a lot of concern. Just check in with Scott Graves, Daniel Suarez as his crew chief and he said not a lot of concern right now but they too have a vibration remember they also took right side tires only on their first top of the day with only 88 laps to go would somebody gamble come maybe a little bit earlier that's in the back of the lead lap cars try to pit a little bit earlier to get four fresh tires and then work their way back to the front yeah I, I I think that's a little bit of a gamble, but right now this 20 car of Eric Jones, he's two laps down, but the next car in front of him is the leader. So he is pushing exceptionally hard to try to get to the leader to get by him so that he can be on, you know, he'll be only be one lap down. So he's got to push hard right now. Hope the caution doesn't come out in the next seven or eight laps, because I think if it doesn't, he will get to the leader and get himself where he's only one lap down. Hey, but you have to have to kind of temper that urge to go run too hard and run the tires off of this thing once again you find yourself in a worse position. We look at the Toyota driver update and Daniel Suarez out front. Eric Jones again two laps down right now running 22nd and coming into this race Eric Jones has the most wins of all Xfinity Series drivers and yet is outside the cut line as far as advancing into the next round. You make a great point DJ is 
how hard do you push it? I think you got to push it really hard here. I think it's such a huge difference between being two laps down and one lap down that I just think you have to push exceptionally hard. At the caution, if he gets by him, I think then back up. I think then back up and just run a nice, easy pace. But I think you have to push hard. Now, you may damage your tires. It may cost you later. But I say you've got to go to try to get one of your laps back here. And, Jeff, that's exactly what Chris Gavehart just told Eric Jones a moment ago. He said, they're pitting in about 8 to 10 laps. I need you to push as hard as you can right now. Then once they hit, then they'll back off the pace a little bit. But right now, he wants Eric Jones to go as hard as he can trying to get one of those laps back. Starting to see a few cars making their way to pit road. And here's something that I'm seeing, though. The 20 car, yes, he's catching Daniel Suarez. He's got on those much fresher tires. But when Suarez is clear of traffic, he really is not getting beat that much by the 20 car. So I think Jones is still having some issues uh, with the handling of his car. Dave. Third time on pit road today for Regan Smith. First time four tires, last time no tires, but they can't get the looseness out of this race car. You see another chassis adjustment wrench in both sides of the rear there. They'll take four good years and fill it full of Sunoco fuel for Regan and hopefully tighten it up a little bit. Again, the 20 just hoping that they get through this cycle of pit stops because the 20 was on pit road earlier than everyone else. Yeah, he needs for that to happen. He needs a lot of good things to happen here. But if this continues green, and that does happen, but he's still going to be in a position that, around people, man. let's just say that it goes on and on. He will have to make another pit stop where the rest that are going to come in somewhere here very shortly are going to be able to make it from there. That's what makes this chase battle so difficult. You've got three races to get it done. It's not 36 races or 32 races or 34 races. Once you get in the chase, it's three races. So trouble in the first race, now not having a good start to the second race. The best car all year long could potentially not advance into the next round. Yeah, this car is not very good here. You can no, see he called up to, to Justin Allgaier here and has not been able to pass him. Suarez is running laps quicker than what Eric Jones is running with much, much fresher tires. Marty. And, guys, that's exactly what he just said a moment ago. He said, I'm too loose. I can't race around anybody. I can't catch anyone. Now we're seeing him losing ground to those leaders, even with the much fresher tires on. Now he just has to hope for no caution. He just has to hope that everybody starts getting on pit road. No one has a tire failure. No one gets him caught. So uh, that's all you can do. If you're not fast enough to pass him, then all you can do is just hope that the caution doesn't come out. Mike. The 88 of Alex Bowman on pit road dealing with a number of issues. Tight at the top of the racetrack and loose into the corner. Crew Chief Dave Ellens asking Bowman, what should we prioritize? He told them, work on the center of the, of the track as much as possible. They'll make a track bar adjustment or tire change, air pressure as well. And Sunoco race fuel for Bowman on pit road as they try to give him a better balanced race car on this stop. Completely different lines as pit stops continue under green flag conditions. Chaser Ryan Sieg on pit road, Rick, and like we said, his car just builds loose and gets looser the longer they run. Wedge and track bar adjustment, trying to tighten it up, Dave. Ty Dillon ran in the top five this whole run, Marty. He called the car about perfect. Slight air pressure adjustment to keep up with the track. Four Goodyear tires, Sunoco fuel to the end. Tough pit road to get on also under these green flag conditions. Uh, very difficult. You try to attack, but you have to be extremely careful not to speed coming in. And a speeding penalty for the 39 of Ryan Sieg. Brendan gone on pit road. Marty. Leader Daniel Suarez making his way slowly down pit road. He did not mention the vibration after mentioning it the first time. Just says the car is a little bit too tight on exit. So not a lot of concern here in the 19 camp. But certainly excited to get four fresh good years on it, Mike. Justin Allgaier has been running inside the top five all afternoon long. His only complaint is that the car continues to get tight the longer they run. They've got good fire off speed, however. Four tire change, air pressure, and fuel for Allgaier. I think a great race to watch is going to be where Eric Jones cycles out after all of these pit stops. Eric Jones currently 12th, still a lap down, as quite a few still have to come to pit road, one of those being the one of Elliot Sadler, who is scored as the race leader, still needing to come to pit road. Brandon Jones will be another one that will have to come to pit road. As we look at this. And a 19 getting on pit road. She had to lock up the tires, had to turn really sharp to keep him hitting into that pit wall. And fortunately, he got it slowed down, and he did not get a speeding penalty. But 
Very difficult pit road to get on because of that commitment line is so far out onto the racetrack, it's very easy to hit the end of pit wall, but you got it slowed down like you needed to. Mike. And Elliot Sadler, last week's winner, pitting from the lead here. The car's been really good, although he's been having a bit of a difficult time trying to run the same line as his teammate Justin Allgaier. Allgaier's been running the high line. Sadler's been trying to get up there, but the car's been just a little bit tight on that lane. Still pretty fast. He'll make a four-tire change with air pressure here, Kelly. Same situation for Brandon Jones. He had tried running the high groove to emulate his teammate, Brandon Gong, in the 62, but he simply said that the 33 was just a little bit too tight. See him come to pit road for four tires. Eric Jones, Ryan Blaney racing side by side. Eric Jones going way up the racetrack, a completely different line that we have been able to see now because of the rubber going down onto the track. Yeah, he's now at a disadvantage to all of these cars that have just pitted. He's just trying to make time where he can and hope that the, now's when he's really hoping. He's getting to that point here uh, that he's hoping that they can get that caution. Uh, he doesn't need that right yet uh, because there's some cars that still need to get on pit road before he really needs that scenario. There's about six cars that came onto pit road at lap 67 uh, when the rest of the top cars didn't come to pit road and so right now they're still out on the racetrack hoping for a caution now to catch a bunch of cars a lap down and one of those guys is the 11 car Blake Cook so you're talking about potentially making a huge gain in this championship battle if these cautions fall the right way for him and he can trap a lot of cars a lap down he could come out of here with a really good finish and help improve himself right now you can see how far up you know he shows he may have winning the race i don't think that's the goal the goal is just to get the best finish you can get they don't have a car fast enough to win a race but he's currently coming into this race he was in eighth place so if the cautions fall the way he needs to and he can trap a lot of these cars lap down this could be a huge day for this team and again eric jones has been able to stay close to the top 10 he's currently running 12th even though he had that early pit stop
big contact with the 42 of Justin Marks and the caution comes out once again. So Marks with hard, hard contact. Justin, one of the drivers that was running up front and had come to pit road on lap 67. Take a look at what happens here. Daniel Suarez in the 19 coming up on the 42. So 19 was trying to go to the bottom and Marks was going to the bottom and 19 just needed to check up just a little bit and give him some room and when he got the car overcorrected and hard impact in the wall. Huge impact. Yeah, it is. You see how easy it is when that car starts to spin, you want to put turn the wheel to the right to keep it from spinning, but if you turn too much wheel to the right, it hangs a right and it makes heavy head on a contact. That shot straight up the racetrack after he overcorrected and Justin Martin's hard contact. Take another look. 3,400 pounds of race car off the ground after slamming into the wall. It's just not hardly in a race driver's makeup to just turn it left and spin the car out. But in those situations, that uh, many times is the, the best thing. You can see just how quickly this car snaps and goes straight to the right. Glad to see him walking. That's, yeah. that's a heavy input. That's why, even though we talked about the end of those safer barriers, that's not liking them. We love the safer barriers being on the racetrack. You saw how much the safer barrier moved and uh, really took a lot of impact away from Justin Marks, but when this wreck started, you know, it all starts off turn four. Obviously, the 19 car, he's got the fast car on the racetrack. He's he's coming at a high rate of speed. And he's saying right now, I want the bottom. But Justin Marks, look how early he turns. He's turning and saying, hey, I'm going to the bottom. He's giving him plenty of notice saying, I'm coming down. But yep. Suarez had decided he was going there anyway. And two guys battling for the same spot. But that could have been avoided. The 19 and Suarez could have, could have gotten out of the throttle a little bit and avoided that wreck. Let's listen into what Daniel Suarez had to say about this. Ben Corbin, man, he was up. He was up when you went into the corner, and he came down in front of him. A lot, like, uh, like he was going to let me go. I think he decided to go to the bottom. Yeah. So you heard initially the spotter saying, you know, he was up, uh, but obviously there's only one person that controls that car and that's the guy behind the wheel well you've got to pay attention to all the surroundings as a driver there's a lot going on we talk about the difficulty and how you have to attack this place but you can see there was a slower car in front of the 42 that he was approaching that was in front of him so you've got to anticipate he's coming down it's not like justin mark wasn't running at a good rate of speed he was running up inside the top five so you have to anticipate those things and so if you're going to win a championship you have to make a little better decisions uh, in those type of situations Let's take another look at this crash and focus in on the safer barrier. Well, you can see right here, we talked about it. See the left front tire, how it was turned to the right. You saw him try to get it turned back left, but couldn't get it turned back quick enough. But watch the impact and watch the foam blocks. Watch how they, watch how these foam blocks move. Those things, they just crush. And then you see the, the, the wall come back out, but that the foam blocks crushing that takes the g-forces away from the driver a huge advancement in motorsports i mean an unbelievable how different it feels when you hit one of these walls versus a concrete wall yeah just incredible what what it's been able to do and and it's allowed uh someone like justin marks right there to, to walk away from that because even though it still stuns you it's nothing like hitting that concrete barrier so that caution came out and it's going to create a little bit of madness here the 11 car Great strategy. He stayed out, did what he needed to do, but there's only nine cars on the lead lap. So Alex Bowman is the first car lap down. Eric Jones, Drew Herring, Elliot Sadler, they're all lap down. You see the 11 car, well, pit road's not open right now, but he will eventually pit. When he pits, Blaney, Ty Dillon, Reed, Algar, Yaley, Chastain, they're all on the lead I don't think pit lap. road is open, and I think he had to come to pit lane. I think he may have run out of gas. Kelly. And that's exactly Ow. what has happened for Blake Cook. They're trying to get any... Uh, last blips of fuel into it. They had to bring him down to pit road. So you see that they're going to service the car as it is. He said he felt really good in the 11, running up high in the gray stuff, although the car had gotten a little bit free. See, it's a four tire change, and they're going to fill him up with fuel here as he was running on fumes. Un unfortunate. One of the other things that Blake Cook, and, and I've seen this so many times from races here, one of the things Blake Cook probably should have done is started running the apron the second the caution came out because these cars pick up the fuel in different pickup spots and normally because of
the G-forces. It's the outside pickup that gets most of the fuel. And if he would have come down to the apron, he might have been able to get more fuel to be picked up for these cars. Yeah, and once again, pit road's not open because of the crash. The car's sitting on the apron uh, down in turns one and two, so the NASCAR can't open the pitch yet. But very unfortunate. It's not going to be devastating to them. And right here, Rick, is exactly what you're talking about uh, as we see J.J. Yellow down there. So, uh, But it, it, even though Blake Cook will have to start at the tail end uh, of the field, uh, he's still going to be on the lead lap if they can get it fired and out right. of the pits. That's the problem right now. They haven't got this car to fire back yet. He pitted. That allowed some cars to go by him, and now those cars are in the lead lap. So we talk about madness. We're going to have we're going to have cars on the lead lap. The first yeah. time a car behind the pace car, if 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 they don't pit, now now they're in a the position to pit. So we we'll have to wait for NASCAR to straighten this out for us, Kelly. So we'll see the other cars come to pit road, starting with J.J. Yaley in that 44. This is a team that's been improving top 15s for the last five races. He's had a loose race car throughout. It'll be four tires and fuel for J.J. Yaley. The 24 car, Corey LaJoy, said that his car has just been a little bit free, so they made a chassis adjustment in the left rear. Four tires and fuel for the 24, Dave. Sixth place, Ryan Reed is on pit road for a car that is tight in the middle, loose late, and then four tires and a track bar adjustment. Ross Chastain on the right, fourth position for him. Pitting now, fuel and tires. His car is loose in and also late center tight. And they made an adjustment for that. And so as the pit cycles through, we go NASCAR nonstop. A busy day at the Monster Mile. At 1.30 on NBCSN, it's Sprint Cup Series countdown to green. Two o'clock, they will get underway with the final race of round one. The round of 16 will be whittled down in round of 12 after today's Sprint Cup Series race. The 42 of Justin Marks was evaluated and released from the infield care center. And so now, 
the big question and almost confusion is where does everybody line up after what just took place on the track and with Blake Cook running out of fuel coming to pit road that put some people that weren't a lap down back on the lead lap before they opened pit road. Yeah, that's right. We know we know Suarez is going to be the leader. He is going to be the leader. He just pitted. Uh, he is going to come out. He is going to come out with the lead. We're going to have a lot of cars taking the pass around. They will not be allowed to pit to take the pass around. So, uh, but when. But they will. There are five of them that will get back on the lead lap uh, by virtue of this. So you can see correct. there are seven cars that are up there in front of, of Suarez. So they can not pit and they can go around the pace car and so they will be back at the tail end of the field and five of these drivers uh, will be get themselves back on the lead lap by virtue of that and they'll be in a situation of pretty much hoping that the caution comes out kind of quick and they're not a part of it. So you have the wave around and you have free passes. The free pass was actually given to Alex Bowman when the caution came out. So Alex Bowman was the driver that was going to receive the free pass. Uh, it ended up when Blake Cook came on to pit road, Alex Bowman actually unlapped himself because of Blake Cook coming to pit road too soon. Dave. You're on board there with Ty Dillon, who came to pit road and got four tires and fuel. Afterwards, they discussed. I'm talking about the 719. Are they close? No, they should be okay, but we're going to have 15, 16 laps tires on them right here. You understand? Yes, simple business. Now, if we catch a late race caution, we don't have tires, and they do, but it put us in a position to capitalize on something different here. Uh, worst case scenario, we still should have a good shot at top five, no matter where it shakes out, but this put us in a shot to have a shot to win here. Trying something different. That was why they did it against the 7 and the 19, Rick. Okay, yeah, so the some, yeah, the something different is Suarez and Algar did not pit under this caution. They had pitted under that green, so their last pit was on lap 124. So the guys that pitted on lap 143 was was Blaney, LaJoy, Ty Dillon, Yaley, Chastain, Reed, all those guys that are on one, 143, 144. So they have fresher tires, but he's indicated that they have no more tires left. That if they get another caution late, as far as an Algar can pit again, then they'll have an advantage. But right now, the three car is sitting there with an advantage. Let's go down to Mike Massaro. And Rick, Justin Marks has just uh, been released from the care center. And before I ask you what happened, how are you? Yeah, I'm okay. Um, <clears throat> this team does a great job building great, safe race cars. I mean, it was a big hit, man. It's all crumpled up inside, but but I'm fine. It's good. Okay, so walk us through what exactly happened. Well, I think there was a little bit of a storm brewing there because the leaders were all coming out of the pits uh, on fresh tires, and we were all trying to stay. Uh, we were trying to stay out there as long as we could on some of the older tires. So there was a big difference in speed, and I think the 19 just got a big run there. And <clears throat> You know, I don't know. It, I mean, it, I got hit from behind, and that's always that's always a bummer. I saw that he had poked the nose out and that he was coming with a lot of speed, but I was trying to pass the 93 there, and, um, and you know, he did what he did, and we got a torque race car. It sucks. When you say he did what he did, what, what exactly do you mean? Well, I hit us, spun us out. Do, do, do you feel like there may have been something more to it than just a simple racing accident? No, I mean, well... I, I don't it depends on what your definition of a racing accident is I mean those guys had tires and he was racing for the win and we weren't that good and he was he was trying to make up as much time as possible and and uh, you know I was trying to do the same thing and there's there's limited space out there so I mean I mean I like Daniel I don't think he did anything on purpose I don't think he did anything stupid I think I think it was just it was a pretty optimistic move All right, thank you Justin yeah, thanks. glad you're okay thank you Justin Marks an early end to his day Rick yeah, racing accident, yes, avoidable, absolutely. And, and again, I'll go back. That's the kind of things that you, and situations you can't put yourself in when you're racing for a championship there. You have to be aware of all the surroundings. Yeah, Daniel didn't go in there and just wreck him on purpose. No. He, just, you know, he didn't go in there and say, I'm going to hit him. He just went in there thinking he had the spot and that you know, the 42 wasn't going to come down and that Justin was going to stay up the racetrack, and Justin thought he was down there. So right. I thought the 19 could have avoided that wreck uh, by just you know not attacking quite so much. But... Obviously, Daniel Suarez is not a dirty race car driver by any means. We don't see him wrecking people. It's just yeah. racing. Stuff happens sometimes right. in racing. Two people battling for the same spot. A matter of inches, really. I mean, that yes. was a situation where it was a few inches that the 19 got into the, the left rear of the 42 and around the 42 win and into the walls. We take a look at the chase grid. Uh, Elliot Sadler with the win at the top, obviously advancing to the round of eight. Daniel Suarez, race leader, will be up there as well. Guys that, are, that were hurt, with this most recent caution have to be Ryan Sieg and Blake Cook. Blake Cook, because they couldn't refire the car on pit road, lost another lap. So he is now a lap down. And Ryan Sieg, because of speeding, 
is now two laps down as we get ready for the restart. Yeah, we talked about that the having to get to pit road wasn't going to be devastating to Blake Cook, except the fact they couldn't get the car to refire, and they sat there before they could get it going and, and lost a lap. So very unfortunate. Went from leading, great strategy, to now uh, behind the eight ball once again. Yeah, one car we see sitting here on the outside of road two, Corey LaJoy, that pitch strategy really helped this guy. Young driver, very good race car driver, not driving the same equipment as everybody around him. Uh, a little bit of an underfunded team, not the staffing, the personnel, but a good day for Corey LaJoy. Let's see if he can take advantage of this pitch strategy and come out here with a good finish. Daniel Suarez has chosen the outside line, and Justin Allgaier will restart on the inside. They will have 50 to go as we take a look at the way the rubber has built up on this racetrack. Yeah, you can see right now, you know, the track's completely white, Dale's almost no rubber on it, but then as they run a couple laps, <laughs> as a matter of fact, two, look at how much rubber goes down on that track. Changes quite a bit, and that's just after yeah. caution. That's and not only does it change in appearance, it changes as a driver with what you're feeling in the race car. So that's how quickly things can change. You have to adapt to all of that throughout these different cautions and uh, situations throughout the afternoon. I always wondered if every racetrack was like that, where you picked up the rubber under caution, or if it was just you saw it at this race track because it's white and the other yeah. racetracks is asphalt. But here it's so obvious that under caution, well, contact under, under wow. caution. That was interesting. That was heavy Drew contact. Herring, Drew Herring come up the racetrack. It looks like trying to clean the tires off and made some contact there. Was it was with the six car, wasn't it? Yeah, look at the damage on the left front of the six. Let's take another look. Again, comes way up, and that's hard contact. Well, I think the six is. I think the six is battling for position, thinking he's supposed to be up there, and I don't think Drew Herring even knew he was there. No. You wouldn't expect anybody to no, be up you there. Wouldn't. And so two by two once again, they come into the restart zone on the outside. Daniel Suarez, Justin Algar on the inside. Green flag back in the air. 49 laps to go. Algar with a great restart on the inside. He'll steal the lead away from Suarez. Corey LaJoy in the 24 on the outside. It's like an ill handling restart for him. Kelly. And so we saw Bubba Wallace in contact with the 18. I just heard Bubba reporting to his team that he thinks that 18 has a right rear flat, so they're telling him to keep an eye on it. It certainly looks like he has a right rear flat. He's going to have to pit, so just one small thing can ruin your day. Listen, we got Justin Algar wouldn't leave this race right now. Remember, he finished fourth here in May. And we've seen these junior motorsports car, they have found some speed in the summer months. So not a huge surprise that Justin Algar is running in front of this race right now. No, no, they're doing a great job, Suarez fast. But how about the guys in third and fourth there with Ryan Blaney and Ty Dillon, both had to start in the rear. Maybe a little contact there. Suarez very aggressive here for the lead. Well, Algar didn't give him any space down the front straightaway after that contact. And I'm not sure there was contact. He may have just got right up to the back and stole a little air off of the back of that car. But Justin Algar definitely got loose. And around goes the 19. So Suarez up front. You saw the 19. You saw Suarez put his hand out the window. The guy that ends up with the lead always puts his hand out the window. <laughs> yeah, yeah, appreciate <laughs> that. Sorry if there was five, 45 more laps. 45 more laps. Suarez back out front. Suarez has already led 78 laps today. Yeah, you can see as he's driving to turn three, 19 as Suarez pulls right up to the seven. Yeah, there's no contact. It's just the seven was loose. 19 took advantage of it. Take another look. This is the bumper cam off of Justin Allgaier's car, and that's how close it was. There, you can pin him down here in the corner. You'll get him off the corner inside. Remember, by these himself. guys are traveling at 100, over 150 miles an hour. And then, yeah, and that's textbook right there. That's everything that you're supposed to do as a driver, taking advantage. You, you don't create contact, even though you may feel like that as the driver in front because your car all of a sudden gets extremely loose. That's a great pass by Daniel Suarez. And right now, Daniel Suarez is the only driver in the top 10 with a 
win in 2016. And Daniel Suarez trying to solidify his position in the round of eight. Ty Dillon has made a great run. He's back up into the top five, running fourth right now. We were just listening to his radio. You have 370, later than 80. They're all flowing the windshield, man. Nice and smooth. Don't get no more than you need. They're coming to you. 19 might eliminate the seven right here. They're going to start beating up hell out of each other. And that was spotter coverage presented by Liberty Mutual Insurance, helping drivers worry less. This is the race that Ty Dillon and his team needed. They they need this thing to finish off after a bad week last week. Running well, they ran well all week, didn't get the finish they deserve. But you know if they can come out of here after starting in the back and finishing with a top four or five finish, a huge advancement in the points. It, it lets them leave here in not such a big hole going the next week's race that they don't feel like they have to win the race. So this team right now, they want to win in the worst way, but they also cannot afford to have a poor finish. Coming in, they were 15 points back. They were at the bottom of the list, and now they have battled back to where just six points behind the 48 of Brennan Poole. And we know they came in and they got their set of tires, so they don't, they want this to run to the end. Now on the other side of that, the driver that he was involved with in an incident at Kentucky that's trying to make his way, Eric Jones, moved up in the night, but he last pitted on lap 99. He's gonna need a caution to happen here if he's gonna salvage a decent day. So big move for Ty Dillon up into the top five as we go NASCAR nonstop. Today's aerial coverage provided by our partners at Smithfield of Foods. A great shot of the Monster Mile. As Daniel Suarez continues to lead, Suarez has enough fuel. He can make it all the way to the end. As can Justin Allgaier, who's running second, but four seconds behind Daniel Suarez. As Suarez now setting a blistering pace here at Dover. Take a look, though, at the left side of your screen. The laps since last pitting. And the big number that stands out there is the 20 of Eric Jones. He's not going to be able to make it to the end of this race. Everyone else should be able to get there without having to come to pit road again. 
Yeah, I don't think there's any issue for anyone other than, than Eric Jones. And he's just going to be, I don't even think he can slow down, conserve enough fuel. Uh, Chris Busher won here uh, back in 2015. Last pit on lap 102. Uh, ran a lot of green flag laps yeah. in that. But I, I don't really think the Toyotas get quite as good of fuel mileage. And I think, you know, we think about when Eric Jones came back out of the pits, how hard he had to run to try to get back on, uh, get one of those laps back. So uh, he saved no fuel at any point in time, other than he's had 13 caution laps since that time. Yeah, when Busher won that race, that all the talk throughout that entire year was how great the fuel mileage right. those teams were getting. So he went way further than anybody else was able to go. So it's pretty extraordinary they were able to make that race. Let's go through the field. We'll start with Marty Snyder. Rick, earlier this week, Daniel Suarez told me he loves the Monster Mile from the first time he came here in K&N, three Xfinity Series races, and right now he could be staring down his second career win. So the car is very good. Told the team I could use a little bit of help. Center exit if we do get another stop, Mike. Marty, just an all-guyer, another driver who really likes this racetrack as well, turned in a career-best Dover finish back in May, finishing fourth. But he told me earlier this weekend, he goes, although that was our best result, wasn't necessarily our best run. He has led laps here before and feels like he can close the deal. Got a pretty fast race car. We just told moments ago that it's almost go time. So watch for that seven to make its move, Dave. The best news for Ty Dillon was that he's got two races to make up what happened in Kentucky. This one has been a big victory so far. Remember, started at the back of the field after an unapproved adjustment all the way up to the third position, Marty. For Ryan Blaney, it's been from 37th to 4th, day. They've moved up to the field, an impressive day for them. Talking to Greg Irwin earlier this week, he said, listen, we've seen some encouraging signs on this 22 team of late. Third at Richmond, third at Kentucky. Today, look at another top five, Kelly. Behind him is the 24 of Corey LaJoy and pit strategy playing dividends for this team. He's never raced here in Xfinity Series car, but he did win a Cannon East race here back in 2012, running fifth right now on on par for his best career finish. Right now, Corey LaJoy reporting that his race car, though, is just a little bit too loose. Behind him is the 44 of J.J. Yaley, who took over the driving duties of this car at the spring race at Richmond. He said they've been steadily making progress, feel like they should be a top 10, top 15 team, which is where they have been finishing for the last five races. In fact, finishes inside that top 15. He, too, has a loose race car, Dave. Kelly, what I reported earlier on Ryan Reed, her working on the race car is playing out. The last time down pit road, they made a major adjustment, put a, a packer in the left front. He called the car much better on this run. Ryan has a handle on it now, Mike. Dave, when it comes to that 88 car, there have been, count it, nine different drivers in this race car. For crew chief Dave Ellens, it has been a challenge to manage all of that. This is just the second time all year he's had the same driver in the car that was in the car for the spring race. And that continuity has played dividends. They've had a fast race car throughout the course of the weekend. Just has been a little bit too tight to get to the front, Marty. Mike Eric Jones in ninth. Rick laid out the dilemma for this 20 team. They last pitted at lap 99. Chris Gavehart told me a moment ago we might be able to stretch it to lap 188, which would be 12 laps to go. He just told Eric on the radio, though, we are four laps short on fuel. So the dilemma can't save at this point. Will they have to pit? Do they get a caution? That's a big question for Eric Jones, Mike. Marty talking with Elliot Sadler earlier this week. He said the victory last week in Kentucky has done a number of things for his mindset. First and foremost, though, it's allowed him to relax, not have to worry about the small things. The only thing he's worried about today, though, is the balance of that race car. It has been far too tight, has not been able to free it up enough to get the speed to get to the front, running 10th right now. Kelly. Behind Elliot Sadler is another veteran driver, Brendan Gong, and he said if, and I'm not saying that we do, but if guys like Elliot and I do have an advantage, it's probably that we know who we are. It's like the old gambling ex expression, sit and stay, do what you do. We don't need to go out there and be anybody else. We need to take advantage of what we can do, perform to the best of our own abilities. Behind him, you'll see a younger driver, a Bubba Wallace. He came into this chase fifth on the grid, seven points to the good. His chase mentality, don't make any mistakes. They feel like they don't quite have as much speed as some of the other teams. So they just want to come away with a clean race and get as many points as they can, Rick. Yeah, there's Bubba Wallace running in the top 12. And then after Bubba Wallace, everyone else a lap down. Blake Cook, we saw him, thought he had a huge advantage. Unfortunately, when they ran out of fuel, they could not get the car refired after getting it fulfilled 
and he lost a lap on pit road. So it looked like it was going to be a huge advantage by being the, you know, only one of the few cars to lead lap. Lost that lap, and now he's all the way back in 16th place. So unfortunate set of circumstances. Looked like it's going to be a great day. Turned out not working out. Marty, how's it going for the 20? Just such a tough decision and position for everyone in the 20 team to be in. Chris Gayhart just told Eric Jones a moment ago, we're going to come with about six to go. So they've got a window here of about 11 laps where they could get a caution, help them out, or they're going to have to come under green flag conditions. Who would have thought this? The lead championship contender coming into this round, a wreck at Kentucky, potentially having to pit late under green here at Dover. Could be a different picture of these guys going to Charlotte right now. So they're hoping for a caution here in a moment. And Jeff, that's a dilemma. You, you don't want to run out of fuel either. So you've got to pit in a safe window, even though you've got to do it under green. Yeah, if you run out really, of fuel. Really take care of it here. All we're looking for is a caution. That's all we're looking for. There you go. That is what they're looking for. If you do run out of fuel, it's much worse than if you have to pit and put fuel in it. But it go back and think about what got him in this spot. He pitted under green, thought he had an issue. Got the tires off and there was no issue. And that's a very difficult driver spot for the driver. I talk about it all the time when these things happen. You want them to find something. You know there's something going on. You can't ignore it because if you do, then you blow a tire and have a problem. Especially, don't think for a minute that those tires having tire, those cars having tire problems early in the race didn't impact that decision for him. But it's just so heartbreaking when you make that decision and it's nothing wrong. You know, he's in such a difficult position. I've been watching lap times, and, and as a driver, you, this is a place that you can save some fuel. There's, you know, because this is a momentum track, you can back out and just let your car coach, no brakes whatsoever. But I haven't seen his lap time show me that he's really trying to save a lot of fuel right at this time. One of the things that is going to end up happening is he's going to lose probably nine to ten spots when he comes to pit road because he'll lose two laps. And right now he's running in the eighth position, the first car that's two laps down is Brandon Jones running 17th. So probably nine spots is going to be lost by Eric Jones if he has to come to pit road under green flag conditions to fill it up with fuel. But he just needs a splash of fuel. So he's going to be on pit road the shortest amount of time. But the other thing is he can't make a mistake on pit road and try to speed and get caught again. And that would just compound the problem. And that's going to be hard because you're frustrated with the situation, trying to get on the pit road, and you're so slow. It's 35 miles per hour here down through here, and you just feel like you're creeping along, knowing that every second that you're taking there is costing you spots. What a run for Justin Allgaier and Ty Dillon. Suarez leading, has a seven and a half second lead as we have just 11 laps to go. Justin Allgaier, seven and a half seconds back. Ty Dillon. Uh, just behind him, again, Ty Dillon starting in the back of the field because unapproved adjustments has made it up uh, uh, really almost a win for Ty Dillon after what he was facing coming into this race. He was he was 12th in the point standings coming into this race and has now battled back up to where just five points below the cut line. Okay, someone else's mistake last week put you in this position as Ty Dillon. Don't put yourself in that position right here. The 19 car has you covered. That's one point. Yes, one point could make a big difference at the end of, of 300 miles next Friday night in Charlotte. But don't put yourself in a position that cost a lot. I know he wants to go finish second, but it's been an outstanding day already. Yeah, don't take a second or a third and turn it into a 25th. You cannot afford that. The other thing that the 20 needs to worry about right now is not running out of fuel. That would be another thing that would just compound the mistakes that have been because made. This time, there you're this hearing. Time of no caution. He's going to come to pit road this time as they're under 10 laps to go. Just eight laps remaining for Daniel Suarez, who's out front. And we're hearing Eric Jones will have to come to pit road on this lap. Marty, he's coming toward you. And Rick, a moment ago, he said it stalled going into three, so the team kind of scrambled into shape to get him to come to pit road a little bit earlier than they thought. Remember, they were going to come with about six laps to go. Here they stretch it to about eight laps to go. Eric Jones coming down pit road. This is going to change the championship picture going to Charlotte next week, which is a cut race for the Xfinity Series. Eric Jones might need to be in a position where he has to win because he's going to be below the cut line here. All they need is two seconds of fuel. He's going to come into the pit stall. They're going to plug it in real quickly. Counting it off is Chris Gayhart right now. Two 1,000. There he goes. But they're going to lose a ton of track position here at Dover this afternoon.
They are going to lose a ton of track position, and that's been this team's weakness. It's not speed. It's not the ability to win races. You saw the leader of Suarez go by him. It's the fact of having poor finishes. They have had nine finishes outside the top 20 this year, and we've had he's had getting ready to have two in a row bad finishes in a best in a two race segment. I'm sorry, a three race segment. It's hard to overcome that. Yeah, and one thing that I saw there, he's been out there on this set of tires for a long, long time. 100 laps he's been out there. He locked the tires up, the front tires up, coming to pit road. Hopefully that won't affect him here in these last five laps. Five laps to go. Daniel Suarez out front. Suarez, the 24-year-old out of Monterey, Mexico, started his NASCAR career in the Mexico Series where he had 10 wins and was the runner-up in the final standings in 2013 before transitioning over to the States and running for Joe Gibbs Racing. And now Daniel Suarez looking for his second career win, the first one coming at Michigan earlier this year. With a win, it would advance him into the round of eight and have another shot, another attempt at a title. The battle for second continues to heat up between Ty Dillon and Justin Allgaier. Yeah, Ty Dillon almost had him cleared. He hasn't cleared this morning. He can come up the racetrack. He's fine. DJ and I both went since he started coming yeah. up turn two trying to get himself clear. Yeah, you're just inches there, but you know that taking that chance of that driver coming, you're not sure of that speed, but that was a great pass for a second by Todd Dillon. What a run for him today. And this time by two laps to go for Daniel Suarez. Again, a very comfortable lead. Six and a half seconds over Ty Dillon, who has taken over the second spot from Justin Allgaier. Ryan Blaney with an impressive showing today in the top five. Alex Bowman, Corey LaJoy, very good run for the 24 team. J.J. Yaley, Elliott Sadler running eighth, Brendan Gaughan ninth, and Ryan Reed in the top ten. This time by the white flag in the air. One more time around for Daniel Suarez. Nice and easy, bud. Nice and easy. Suarez has put on a clinic today. After leading 122 laps, Getting ready to lead the 123rd and the final lap at Dover. Final time through three and four. Daniel Suarez looking for his second career win in the Xfinity Series. Checkered flag, he wins at the Monster Mile. Thank you, guys. Woo! Right up there, right up there. Woo! Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good job, guys. I'm very proud of you. Oh, man, what a car. Woo! Daniel Suarez. Welcome to the second round of the chase, my friend. Has just locked himself into the round of eight, as you just heard on the radio. This young driver, just 24 years old from Mexico, said he continued to watch racing over and over and over, not only to learn about racing, but to learn English so that he would be able to communicate with his team. And there's the coach. Joe Gibbs will be celebrating in victory lane. Again, on a doubleheader day where he's hoping that he could see another one of his cars get to victory lane later this afternoon. Yeah, I've just loved watching Daniel Suarez come up, learn. Uh, you talk about learning English. From that to learning these tracks, the cars, uh, everything that it takes to be a, a winning driver, the patience that he's shown, uh, but his enthusiasm is just unbelievable. And it's just fun to watch this young man compete and perform. Yeah, I think the word is learn. I mean, you, you're, you're right. He is. You, you saw him make mistakes, you know, early in his career, he make mistakes. And he would learn from it. He wouldn't make that mistake again. But he always pushed his cars hard. He pushed himself hard. Come on, you got more than that here. see a young guy with that much effort have success. <laughs> and it's a little bit difficult to do a burnout on a racetrack where there's nine degrees of banking on the front stretch. And he's learning that as well and doing a very fine job. Just the second win in his Xfinity Series career. But so much talent that we've been able to see race after race for Daniel Suarez. You know, we were talking about Joe Gibbs racing and, and all the focus has been on his teammate, Eric Jones, as the favorite. Yeah. And, and Elliott Sadler is going to be right there. But this thing, a man that you look at throughout the year that has shown the ability and now winning races on difficult racetracks that we can consider uh, one of the championship contenders that could be there in that final four. And that car may continue to roll back in the ball, but Daniel Suarez doesn't care. He's going to go grab the checkered flag. The celebration has begun. 
Daniel Suarez, you see the enthusiasm as he runs down the front stretch. He decided, I'll leave my car all the way down near turn number one, and I'll run back to the flag stand. <laughs> what a day it has been. Once again, this race was supposed to, as he hits it out of the park, this race supposed to be run yesterday afternoon, but because of the rain, rescheduled for this morning. Three Cup Series drivers that are a part of the chase in the Cup Series were supposed to be running this race. They made the decision not to run it. That opened up the door for Daniel Suarez to dominate here at Dover, leading 123 laps, and most importantly, the last one. He will be celebrating win number two of his career in victory lane when we come back to Miles the Monster. And the celebration continuing for Daniel Suarez after running to get the checkered flag. Getting the checkered flag, now it's time to get the car to victory lane. So he's making a reverse lap around Dover. Closer to the fans in the grandstand so that he can celebrate alongside of them. That thing is so easy on the tires, he can't even blow them out with all the burnouts <laughs> right. that he's done, Jeff. <laughs> What a day it has been for Daniel Suarez. I want to take a look at the chase grid. Now Daniel Suarez and Elliot Sadler both with wins have solidified a spot in the round of eight. Justin Allgaier with a 17 point lead going into Charlotte. The the elimination race for the first round the round of 12. Brendan gone 14 points above the cutoff line. Look at Ty Dillon. He came into this race 15 points behind the cutoff line. Now just three points. Definitely not a must win situation. Definitely put himself in a better position to advance into the round of eight. But he's going to have to race everyone very hard to be able to be a part of the round of eight. Yeah, and for those who say that after you win a race in this chase format, there's no need to race. Well, guess what? What if Eric Jones hadn't won the races he won? He yeah. had the, has 12 bonus right. points. Take away those bonus points from Eric Jones that he won. By winning races, where would he be now? He would be in a must-win situation. And the other thing that comes into play, Eric Jones could end up being in a must-win situation. It's going to be more difficult because when he goes to Charlotte, we're going to see more cup drivers. Yeah. That will be in the Xfinity Series race at Charlotte because it will be a companion race once again. And you see Eric Jones talking to coach Joe Gibbs, and uh, it was just a tough day for him. And he's in a position now. The last time he was at Charlotte, Finished 31st in May. Uh, there was some contact with Wall early and lost a tire late. So Eric Jones, no guarantees going into Charlotte that he's going to have a great run. But let's celebrate victory lane. We go to Mark. What a performance and what a show put on by Daniel Suarez today. He wins here at the Monster Mile at Dover. Happy young man. Get him to hop off the race car. You ever dominated a race like that before? Man, I don't remember the last time, honestly. Uh, I'm very proud of entire this team. <laughs> the 19 Interstate Batteries, Toyota Camry did a really good job today. Uh, and the guy just brought an amazing car. Uh, we have a ton of speed. You know, one of those races that you will feel bad if you, if you lose the race, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Harris, Juniper, 
the Wall, Toyota, Coca-Cola, everyone to put this program together. Uh, it's pretty unbelievable to win this way. Tell me about the pass on the seven. D Dale Jarrett called it textbook. Never touched him. Got enough air on him to move him out of the way, though. Tell me about that pass. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, he he was racing aggressive because clean air was everything. He got me right there on the restart, and, and I was a little faster than him. And, uh, and I knew if I was close to his rear bumper, I was going to make him lose. I don't think I never touched him, but I, that was enough to make me lose, to make him lose, and be able to complete the pass. Uh, but like I said, very proud of everyone. I want to apologize as well to uh, to the 42. Obviously, really, that wasn't my intention to, to wreck him that way. I thought I had the inside line and hit, and then he went to the bottom. I uh, apologize for that. Uh, Norm Miller uh, for inter from East Interstate to put this program together as well. Just very proud of this team. Everyone did a really good job. Right, well, you got to do your burnouts closer to the flag stand. You had to run down the front stretch. I wanted to do it in front of my team because they, ah. they, they, they got this one. This car was unbelievable. Uh, yeah, I had to run a little bit, but that's fine. When you win, you can run a little bit. You want, you want to send a message to the folks at home in Spanish? Yeah, sure. Muchas gracias a todos por su gran apoyo. La segunda, vamos por el chase. Mexican-born Daniel Suarez in victory lane here at Dover and also has advanced himself to the next round of the chase as well, Rick. Big smile on the face of Daniel Suarez. Look at the list of drivers that uh, international-born drivers that have won in the Xfinity Series. Marcus Ambrose so good on road course races. Uh, he was able to win five times, but Daniel Suarez now two wins already in the Xfinity Series, and he's got quite a few still to go this year that he could add to that total because he's looking very impressive. And just as he mentioned, the team really clicking right now gave him a great car. Yeah, really, really fast. I was going to talk more about him, but Jeff's going to translate what he said in Spanish there to for everybody, <laughs> right? I, oh, appreciate, no. I appreciate you thinking of me, Dale. <laughs> no. he, he, it was just, you know, he did everything right. Yeah, he got himself in one spot. He apologized for that, and we all make mistakes, and, and we're better for it. He yep. understands that situation now. But uh, this is a driver we're going to be watching win races uh, for a, a long time to come, not only in this series, but the Cup Series uh, eventually. A tough luck day for Eric Jones in the 20 just moments ago. Kelly Stavis caught up with him. An understandably frustrating day for Eric Jones. Eric, you had the vibration, and then you guys just didn't get the caution that you needed to recover. So how do you compartmentalize this and move forward to the next race? Well, we weren't very good before that either. So, you know, just kind of an embarrassing day overall. We want to run a lot better than that, and it's pretty pretty embarrassing not even being the chase right now for the next round, too. So got a lot of work to do. Got to have a good run, run at Charlotte for sure. You know, it's... Uh, it's just unfortunate. It's just something that I would have never saw him coming um, and just pretty, pretty disappointed. But with this chase format, obviously there's always that opportunity, a win, a strong performance and some bad luck. How do you move forward? Yeah, I mean, we got a good team, you know, we just have to have to do it right. And we just didn't do it this weekend. And it's unfortunate, you know, we didn't have the car and, and things just didn't work out. So hopefully we have a better car next week at Charlotte and we'll be able to uh, to go out and hopefully get into the next round and be a lot of work, a lot of pressure, but, you know, I think we can do it. Thank you, Eric. Thanks. With Ty Dillon now with a charge from the back of the field to second place. So were you motivated or was the car just that good? The car was really good. Um, obviously, we were motivated. Uh, a little disappointed with the way that everything started there, but uh, good good run for our red cap uh, Sullivan uniform Chevy. It was a fun race, you know. We, uh, we, we started off really good, and I slapped the wall there, the new addition to the racetrack. And... Um, Thought it was going to mess himself up, but we were actually still pretty good. So, um, don't know if we had anything for the 19. Would have liked to have, uh, you know, gotten through traffic a little bit quicker to have a shot at him. But all in all, it was a great day. What we needed uh, it takes a little bit of the pressure off going into Charlotte. We still got to execute there and do what we did today, and we'll be fine. So your outlook in general going to Charlotte now just three points below the cutoff line, Ty. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, you know we're close enough just to do what we typically have done all year and and have a good finish. Have a good finish, get a top five, and uh, we'll be able to get to the next round. And again, that was moments ago. So we do see Daniel Suarez celebrating in victory lane and on the phone right now. But after two races, Suarez and Elliott Sadler with wins, they advance. And that's why the big smile on the face of Daniel Suarez, the drivers on the outside of the top eight. Ty Dillon, Eric Jones, Ryan Sieg, Brandon Jones, all trying to figure out what they'll have to do at Charlotte to be able to advance into the round of eight. Now, coming up later today on NBCSN, 
Chase elimination race for the Sprint Cup Series. Who will advance to the round of 12? Coverage begins at 1.30 p.m. Eastern with countdown to green. And coming up next on CNBC will be regularly scheduled programming. But again, uh, a big day on NBCSN from right here at Dover. And then uh, kicking it all off, we're at the end of the day at 7 o'clock, Racing Roots with Kevin Harvick. A great show as to how he grew up in Bakersfield, California. What an eventful day it has been already. And again, this is just the first of the double header. After the rain came and pushed this race back to a Sunday morning. A little bumping and banging, some hard hits, but in the end, a dominating performance by Daniel Suarez. 127 laps fled, and he gets his second career Xfinity Series win. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.